We've got some breaking news. The Kremlin has said that President Putin is due to meet Turkey's President Erdogan next week. Uh, it comes as the UK's biggest defence contractor, BAE Systems, has signed deals with the Ukrainian government to ramp up its supply of weapons. The Kremlin has said those systems could be a target for Russian military. Our uh, military analyst, Sean Bell, is here with me now. Sean, let's just talk about this flash about BAE systems, because clearly BAE is one of the biggest defence contractors here in, in the UK. Uh, no surprise that it might be making weapons or, or resupplying Ukraine at this point. What, what's this development that we're learning about over the last 24 hours? Yeah, it's been, uh, it's literally been breaking, hasn't it? That looks like the BA systems are actually looking like having an in-country capability to support uh, Ukraine. And part of that, I think, is that uh, Ukraine... I look back to my history 30 years ago when I was fighting the Cold War. Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union. They were fighting with former Soviet Union equipment. And they started this war with former Soviet Union equipment, but second-rate, older kit. What the West is trying to do is give them um, lots of uh, very highly precise, very capable Western equipment. But, of course, that's coming out of our inventories. And part of the challenge is how do you create a sustainable industry for Ukraine in the long term? Is Ukraine going to rely, go back to its former Soviet Union kit? Or is it going to have to develop its own national capability? And I think BA Systems, this is all part of this effort to try to enhance Western support. And particularly, as we've talked about before, if the ongoing support from the West, um, we've only used weapons out of our inventory, those are coming to a worryingly low level and we'd have to take even more risk unless we create options for Ukraine to develop this stuff itself. And the Kremlin's clearly not happy about this, saying that they wouldn't want to see these BAE systems uh, developments in Ukraine. Un understandably, and that those locations could become a target for them. Again, not that surprising. I mean, that could create a, a bit of a conflict if it's a British company site that does get attacked in Ukraine. It could be, but uh, let's be quite clear. First of all, um, NATO and the West are not prepared to put combatants into the war, but we are supplying weapons, and with those weapons, need contractors, it needs support, uh, and whether those are in-country support, I have no doubt, as you say, this will raise the profile of some BA Systems folks. But there's an interesting story that came out as well in the news today about um, Ukraine. Uh, President Zelensky claimed they had a 700-kilometre weapon. Now, they're being very effective, Ukraine, at targeting Russia inside Russian territory, but the West has said you cannot use Western weapons to do those attacks. Mm -hmm. But if Ukraine was able to develop its own capability, which clearly they are nationally, but if now they can leverage the technology and support of Western defence companies, that could be a powerful amalgam. And almost certainly that's what's uh, made Russia slightly nervous. Um, let's touch on the other flash that just came across. So Putin expected to meet with Erdogan early next week. It's an interesting balance there, of course, for where Erdogan sits on this war. But, you know, the grain deals and what Turkey's been, I guess, helping with on that front will, will no doubt be on the agenda. Almost certainly it's the grain deal. I mean, um, we've covered that extensively. And uh, whilst President Putin has been um, ramped up attacks on the Ukrainian grain supplies, that has also impacted on um, Russia's ability to sell grain on the global stage as well. And so there's no doubt that uh, eventually it's to all parties' interests to get the grain deal signed again. It's particularly because Russia has inflicted some pretty significant damage on the Ukraine's ability to export grain. And, of course, the grain season was July and August. As we drift into September, President Putin almost certainly will be thinking, grain I've taken off the table, let's get a deal done. But Russia also exports fertilisers. There's lots of other things that uh, Putin will want to open up the markets for again. And it looks like Turkey will be the route to do that. Sean Bell, as always, thanks so much. Thank <laughs> you.